Hello, welcome to Sleep Hypnosis Weekly dot com. My name is Jason Newland. And this is deep. It's not deep. It's Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. I do too many podcasts. I forget what I'm doing. Uh, please, I'm going to listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And this, there's a new recording every Friday. Now, if you would like to leave a comment, let me know what you think of the podcast, what you think of this recording, then please go to my website and... You can just, uh, underneath the actual recording, the embedded player, there is a comment box if you wish to leave a comment. My other, I've got a few other websites, letmeboreyoutosleep.com, uh, deepsleepwhisper.com and jasonnewland.com, where all my stuff is on. And... That's it. There's a few other bits and bobs, but I won't bore you with that. And please share. Share this recording. Share the podcast. Share the video if it's on YouTube. If you like, onto Facebook or Twitter. Just let more people know, really. If it's uh, something that you benefit from, then there's going to be other people that also may benefit. So that'll be groovy. Um, right. No idea what I did last week. No idea what recording I did. What what I talked about. With the daily stuff that I do, I kind of have a, a bit of a memory of what I did yesterday. Because it's a week ago. I forget. So, I guess there's always going to be a bit of an overlap, because it's the same subject. It's about finding new ways to calm your mind, to let go of those thoughts. To relax your body and to drift into a calm, safe, healing sleep. So I suppose in a way my voice is going weird for some reason. I had a little bit of a cough earlier, so hopefully I'll be okay. Do you ever have that when your voice just goes strange? It sounds like like sound like my throat was webbed or something. I start talking like that. It's very strange. In a way, what's happening with these recordings? Not just these, but you know, other stuff that I do. Is it seems like there's this like a tunnel which uh, kind of leads to sleep, leads to just drifting off. And kind of every time I make a new recording, it's like I'm uh, putting a new doorway, a new entrance into that tunnel. So although this might be number 12 or number 13, I don't know, one of them, in this 
podcast. So that's you know twelve or thirteen different doors. As well as the hundreds of other doors that I've made with my other podcasts over the years since 2006 plus your own doors that you've made because if you think about it since you were born how many times do you think that you've been asleep I mean you're looking at thousands and thousands of times I love a lot and when I'm 48 years old so I can't even count the amount of times I've been asleep I'd need a calculator and even then you know, there's, there's been times when I haven't slept. There's been times when I've slept more than twice in a day. So, you know, it's, it's still in the thousands. So if you were to think of if you were to think of insomnia as being like a, a patch of dirt at the bottom of your garden or it could be mud, dirt, whatever you want to call it and you, there's seeds, there's these seeds and we're given a we're kind of connect the grass as insomnia so clearly the grass needs to grow from the seeds in order to do that it needs to be left alone it needs to have the water from the rain I suppose the sunshine you know all those things you think every time you sleep every every time you have slept you're walking around on that piece of dirt and if you've ever tried to grow grass on your lawn you know that walking on it is one way of preventing it from growing. Plus you've got the birds that will come down and eat the seeds. You've got, you know, the weather conditions which can sometimes get in the way of the grass growing. So the odds against that grass actually growing, even if you weren't to walk on it, isn't great. Sometimes you need to keep laying the seeds in order to grow the grass. In fact, when I was a kid, I remember my dad trying to grow some grass in the garden there was a patch that just was bare and nothing he did you know no amount of seeds could encourage that you know the grass to come it just nothing of course me walking around in it every day probably didn't help and in the end he had to get turf We bought turf and he put it in and it's all there. And the 
thing is with grass, because I never realised really, again you connect in grass with insomnia, I never realised because I thought grass went down to the middle of the planet when I was a kid, it might seem strange but you know I thought grass was like trees and it went down you know hundreds and thousands of feet into the earth. When in fact, if you look at turf, you can see that it doesn't go down that far. It doesn't have to go down far in order to grow. And if you want to remove grass, you've only got to dig down a little way. And grass can be removed from the garden very easy to remove it's not as deep seated not as deep rooted as perhaps we once thought again it's similar to the insomnia it can seem you know because when you look at a big grass big patch of grass maybe a like a golf course or something like that and you think wow of course it's a lot, it's a lot of ground. But then if you see there's patches where people have been playing golf and they've perhaps got the skill, the golf skill of me and they keep missing the ball. And it only takes a couple of misses before that grass, that surrounding grass is being chopped away and gone and it's just mud so the grass doesn't go down very far so you know with a golf course it could it seem like wow that is so much what you would need was a tractor Point into the ground and just to skim a few inches off the top that's the grass gone but when you think about it in that way you realise that actually these this thinking of something being more than it is starts to change. It's kind of almost like a a tooth. You know when you're a kid and you've got a tooth and it's your teeth are solid, aren't they? You're solid and you're eating for years and you know everything's fine and then when you get to, I don't know, seven or six five, maybe older even, they start to get loose because you they're your baby teeth. But sometimes you can have your baby teeth till till you're like ten, eleven even. It depends on the person. But that one thing that once seemed completely solid is now loose. And it comes out easily. It's then you realise that actually teeth are not attached to your head. They're attached as far as, you know, in your gum. But they're not actually, the teeth are not attached to your jaw. in the same way as your fingers are attached to your hand. So there's that looseness, there's that pliability in thinking, that plasticity of thought when thinking about insomnia that actually it isn't this 
fixed thing. It isn't a scary monster that has control. Doesn't have any control. It's not a monster. It's not something that's out to get you. And it sometimes it can seem like that. You know, like, oh, why is my mind doing this to me? When your mind isn't doing anything other than just thinking. And as I may have said in the past, the fact that your mind is thinking and you may have complete clarity and all your attention may be focused on those thoughts is actually a gift to know that your brain and your mind is actively working which is a wonderful thing it's just bad timing that's all it's just bad timing and it's nobody's fault I mean, trains are great when they turn up on time. But if you need to catch a train at nine o'clock in the morning, but it turns up at two o'clock in the morning, that's no good to you, is it? Because you're in bed. In the same way, the mind, the thinking is not necessary at two o'clock in the morning when it may be at nine o'clock in the morning. That full awakeness and thinking and alertness is a great thing to have when it's time to get out of bed. It's a great thing to have when you're traveling to work. When you're at work. Or whatever it is you're doing at college. Or even if you're not working. Whatever activity that you choose to involve yourself in during your day. It's nice to have that alertness and to have your mind working for you and being able to think, work out solutions, to be able to enjoy the process of being alive. when you're awake but when you are asleep or when you choose to go to sleep that's your time separate from that part of you that's wide awake and alert and enjoying the day and you know, focusing on whatever it is that you're doing. Because sleeping doesn't need focusing on, doesn't need thinking about. With sleeping, there's very little that needs to be done. It's just 
laying down on your bed if that's how you sleep your head touches a pillow your body relaxes and your mind slows down that's all that is needed nothing else and that can be a bit of a I don't know, it can sometimes feel a little bit like less than what you're capable of doing. When you know you're capable of thinking and, you know, problem solving and planning and all those things which involves your brain, which is a great thing to be able to do those things and to think logically, uh, philosophically. Uh, you know, all that stuff. But not when you're in bed. Not when it's time to sleep. You can leave those thoughts outside your bedroom door. The same as you don't eat a sandwich while you're on the toilet you know a toilet isn't a place to eat it's a separate thing if you've been out in the snow chances are you'll leave your boots outside the door before you go into the house possibly so you don't bring the ice and snow in of course you might like ice and snow in your in your house you might actually bring a wheelbarrow full of it and build a snowman in the living room that's up to you you can leave your thoughts worries plans concerns wishes dreams all that stuff leave it out leave it at the door Leave it at your bedroom door. And then when you get into bed, that stuff's there. You don't need it. You may be into ballroom dancing. You don't sleep in your ballroom gown or your big tuxedo suit thing you may love deep sea diving but you don't go to bed with your flippers on and your snorkel it's a, it's a separate thing completely separate nothing to do with going to bed Nothing to do with going to sleep. I can guarantee that if I went to bed with a snorkel on and flippers, a big gas chamber, you know, if I'd been deep sea diving, a big mess, a big boat at the side of the bed, I would, I'd struggle to sleep. That's my chair, by the way. If you hear squeaks, it's the chair. It's a separate thing. When you lay down on your bed, your head touches a pillow. That's a signal for your body to relax and your mind to slow down. completely separate from any other activity that you do. Because your dream life is separate. Your dream life starts when you're asleep. You don't need to bring anything to the table. 
You don't need to bring anything to bed with you. You don't need to bring a, a list of things to dream about. You don't need to bring a list of things to do once you're in bed. Because all you need to do is just lie down. Do what you did when you were a baby. When you were, you know, all the way through our lives. You lie down. Your head touches a pillow. And you just drift off to sleep. And your mind slows down. And you know the one thing that a lot of people do that is completely pointless and it has the adverse effect is that part, you know, some people say try and force themselves to go to sleep start arguing in their head why am I not asleep yet I have to go to sleep I must go to sleep please let me go to sleep oh. I've done it myself and it's very natural to do that but it's not helpful because somewhere within you when you're doing that is you're blaming yourself you're having a go at yourself. You're trying to force a natural process which can't be forced. If anything, the opposite works. When you don't care if you sleep or not, that's when you fall asleep easily. Sometimes trying to stay awake is a thing that will send you to sleep. But I say, why try to do anything? Because you're lying in your bed, your head touches the pillow, you relax your body naturally. That's just natural stuff. What else is going to happen apart from you falling asleep? What, what other options are there? What do you expect to happen? There's nothing's going to happen. It's just, you're just lying there. And you can enjoy the feeling. Because I love lying down on the bed. To be fair, regardless of what time of the day or night, I'm, <laughs> I just like laying down on the bed because I'm very lazy. But I do like that feeling of just closing my eyes and having a break, having a rest. And just, I actually feel quite grateful because I listen to the birds in the garden. Because by the time I go to bed, they're up and they've just woken up now as I'm doing this recording. Because uh, I can only make recordings when I'm awake. So if, <laughs> if I was asleep, I wouldn't be able to make this recording. So it's not necessarily going to be at the same time that you're sleeping. That's if you're listening to it to go to sleep. Or just so your mind can be you know, changed. to direct your thought in a different way. So that you're no longer criticizing yourself or 
having a go at yourself for not being you know able to sleep instantly at will but don't forget that our minds are not trained dogs you can't say sit to yourself sit, stand, fetch because we wouldn't want someone else saying that to us I'm sure if you're walking in the park and somebody yelled at you and chucked a stick and said fetch you probably wouldn't be hugely impressed unless it was a pre-planned enjoyable activity that you like to share in the same way why tell your mind go to sleep now go to sleep sleep doesn't like to hear that doesn't like that tone but if you're gentle instead of criticising or instead of wording it like why can't I sleep you can say gently to yourself Time to sleep. I love sleeping. I feel so comfortable. Mm, This is nice. Sleeping so easy. Effortless. I feel so relaxed. So relaxed. Of course, you don't have to say anything because you don't have to do anything. This is about wrapping your mind around the idea that actually sleeping is something that you were born to do. There's very few things that we are born to be able to do. You know, we most animals are born. Some are able to walk straight away. Some are able to feed themselves straight away. But humans, we're born completely helpless. There's very few things that we can do. We can cry. We can hear. We can smell. We can see. We can suck. Milk. And you know. We can move parts of our body, but not necessarily know that we're doing it, and not necessarily be able to purposely do it, not when we're first born. And we can sleep. Again, we don't know we're doing it. We don't know what it is. We don't care what it is, because we don't question it. This is one of the few things that we were born able to naturally do. We are able to laugh. Babies can laugh. 
I just not always sure if they're laughing or they're doing a poo but they still make the facial expressions lots of different emotions they don't know what's going on they don't know what the emotions are they don't care because it doesn't matter all that matters is that the baby's healthy parents don't care what why they're smiling they're just happy their child's smiling. The baby's not bothered. He's probably just laughing at all these funny looking humans. Thinking, probably thinking, what on earth are they? What is this place? And they can fall asleep in a second. you ever seen a child try and stay awake it's not just babies children of all ages you know trying to force themselves to stay awake and falling asleep I've seen babies do that even when they're eating So falling asleep is the most natural thing in the world. And you may say, but JJ, you said this before. You said this 10 years ago in a session I heard. You said this in 2006, you said it in 2013, 15, 17, you've said it so many times. It's because it's true. It's a very simple truth. We were born to be able to sleep. One of my recordings was called Sleeping is Your Birthright. And it is. One of the greatest things we have inherited as a human, we've all inherited it. just because somewhere along the line somewhere along your life maybe some changes have happened which has kind of affected that smooth movement from lying in your bed your head touching the pillow, your body relaxing, your mind slowing down and just smoothly drifting into sleep. If you think back to the past there was a time when you'd go to bed and expect to fall asleep you know you were old enough to comprehend what was going on you know within the sleeping part you're not a baby anymore but you expect to fall asleep it's just part of the process maybe you clean your teeth go to the toilet you know whatever you need to do and you go into your bed change into your pajamas or you know whatever your, your routine is lay down put your head on a pillow it sounds like you've got like a, a detachable head the way I say that doesn't it lay down and put your head on the pillow so you lay down your head touches the pillow your body relaxes 
it's a natural process. And the weird, you know, as long as you've got a comfortable bed. But the weird thing is, even if you don't have a comfortable bed, you know you're going to wake up comfortable. I was saying the other day, if I woke up on a, a bed of nails, I would still not want to get out of bed. I'd still feel completely relaxed and comfortable. So why wait until you wake up to have that feeling of complete comfort? It's going to happen anyway. So why not just have it earlier? You know that feeling where you... Perhaps the alarm's gone off. And you put your alarm clock on snooze. And how easy it is to drift back to sleep. How easy and instant. You're dreaming again. You're fully asleep. Why wait until the alarm goes off? Why not just have that feeling of just... Drifting off completely so tired when you first go to bed. It seems to make more sense because it's just a feeling, it's just a feeling. you can notice more and more when you go to bed how you feel way more relaxed it may feel in some ways strange if it's been a while since you you know easily and naturally drifted off to sleep but the bigger feeling you have is that sense of familiarity that sense of how things used to be when it comes to sleeping deeply sleeping easily because sleeping is, isn't something that we need to learn staying awake is something we need to learn not need to but something that you have learnt So it's a case of choosing to go back to the real you. That part that sleeps easily and naturally. That part that you were born with. It's always been there. Just reminding yourself, just like that grass in the garden, the seeds that won't grow because you're constantly walking on it, because the birds are coming down and eating the seeds.
so the grass never gets a chance to grow. Or in some ways, listening to this, it's like getting that tractor and just tearing up the grass, removing it completely. So that grass, which was the insomnia, is re just completely uprooted. Especially then you realise that it wasn't as deeply rooted as you once thought. Just like the old analogy is now the sandcastle. Doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter how amazing that sandcastle is. When the tide comes in, the sandcastle will be washed away. Always. So really that's all that the insomnia is. It's a sandcastle. Not a nice sandcastle. Not necessarily a bad sandcastle. Because it's okay to be indifferent. Why add emotions to something that doesn't deserve emotions added? Because ultimately insomnia is something that has been created within you and you don't you know that part isn't aiming to hurt you or to cause you problems that part doesn't realise that it's doing that it's just bad timing your brain becomes active at the wrong time when it doesn't need to be It's like eating a sandwich on the toilet is not the right time. Practicing your violin on a bus, a public bus, that's bad timing. There's always a time and a place for different things. Farting during a wedding ceremony. It's actually something that I enjoy doing, so we'll keep that in. That's, that's quite good timing. Especially when they say, does anybody have anything to say before we continue with this ceremony? Or forever hold your peace. That's a good time to let off a big, loud fart. That's why I take a big loud. I take a, a loud speaker with me. And those ones are tannoy system thing. Timing. It's all about timing. If you're into watching football, you don't turn the football, you don't turn the television on after the game's started or after the game's finished. You turn it on before the game started. Because you want to watch it. There's no point turning it on two hours later because it'll be over.
So there's always different ways of looking at things. You could say, you could say, all the the birds outside is bad timing for me when I'm making a recording for sleep. Is it bad timing on my part or on their part? sent leaflets to all the different nests to ask them to be quiet while I make a recording but they decided to carry on anyway it's natural isn't it it's what they do it's natural just like sleeping it's natural birds wake up twerp and not twerp they make their noise whatever you want to call their noise they sing they dance they're all having showers and having a cooked breakfast or whatever they do getting the kids ready for school and I think there's something to be said for the peace of mind that comes with realizing that that sensation of just drifting to sleep, that point that moment is really nice it's just a nice feeling it almost feels like it's a train that you're getting on <clears throat> and then just You sit down and it just takes you to where you're going. And it arrives at the time when it's time to go to sleep. It's a nice feeling. to realize that actually the most natural thing in the world has always been available and will continue to be available in a much simpler way by not needing to do anything. It's kind of the opposite of doing things. You don't need to do anything in order to fall asleep naturally. just the energy that comes from listening to me listening to this recording and maybe all the other recordings changes that part of your mind that part of your brain responsible for allowing your sleep patterns to change in a way that benefits you that allows you to just drift off naturally and easily and securely and safely in the knowledge that when you do wake up next day or in seven hours time eight hours time whatever
ever. Do you feel relaxed and calm? And you know that you had a good sleep. And you feel so refreshed. And you realise that the words that I've been saying are true. The sleeping really is your birthright. Sleeping really is the most natural thing in the world for all of us. It's as natural as breathing. And all those other bodily functions that take no conscious effort. It's all part of the same process as sleeping. Because you don't have to think about breathing. It just happens naturally. And so, the sleeping. Easily and naturally. Safely. Feeling so relaxed. So calm, so open to the possibilities of just how easily you will now drift into a deep, healing, natural sleep. Deep healing, safe, natural sleep. So calm, so relaxed. So why not just let go completely? And embrace this natural gift of sleep that you were born with the ability To relax completely your body and your mind. And drift really, really drift. Deeply and sleep.